Before we get started, I want to show off this dial. If you've been following me for a long time, you recognize this dial is something I used to use an awful lot when I was trying to shoot pictures every day. Whew, that was a slog, but this dial made it a whole lot easier. And the reason I'm showing it off is because the creator of it, who goes by High School Creations, has a Kickstarter going right now called Wall XD. Now, from what I can tell with Wall XD, it's basically a modular dial playset. Here's a picture of it right here that shows how it works. So if you're into action figure photography, which dios help a lot with, go ahead and check this out. And if you're so inclined, go ahead and back this project because to me, it looks pretty cool. And hey, I figure he does good work here. He's definitely gonna do good work with that Kickstarter. Two more things. I won't be talking about the Biker Mice from Mars by Nacelle just because I can't tell from the images what the articulation's actually going to be. Also, I really want that McFarlane Batmobile. Mm, that's purdy. And now, on to the toy photography news for March 18th, 2023. Well, hello there, everybody. I'm Photo Dave. This is Toy Picks, and you're watching Toy Photography News. Now, in Toy Photography News, I go over the past week's fully revealed action figures and assign them photo scores based on seven criteria. The first being sculpt, the second being paint, the third being whether or not they have an extra head or heads, the fourth being whether or not they have extra hands, the fifth being whether or not they have accessories, the sixth being decent articulation, and the seventh being natural movement. Now, natural movement means there's no 90 degree bend at the elbows or knees, any kind of twist isn't breaking up design work, and there's no waist cuts because none of that stuff, well, none of that stuff lets the figure look natural. But before we really get cracking, please remember that there will be product links in the video description below to everything you see in the video. If you choose to click on those links, they are affiliate links, and you purchase something through them, I get a cut. I really appreciate it. Now, if you're shopping at Entertainment Earth, be sure to use the link in the video description below to save 10% on all in-stock items. Plus, if you spend $59 or more, you'll get free domestic shipping. But if you're watching it on a TV and you're not clicking the link, just use code TOYPIX for all those in-stock items. And if you're clicking that link in the description and you are only ordering pre-order items from Entertainment Earth, just remember to use code FREESHIP59 to get free shipping on orders of $59 or more. Whoo! Now, let's get to the news, shall we? Let's kick things off with McFarlane Toys and the DC Direct Page Punchers line, Dr. Fate. Now, looking at Dr. Fate here, we see he's got a whole lot of the McFarlane things happening. He doesn't look bad as far as the diaper's concerned. It looks like that's cut really well, but he has nothing in the diaphragm. Like, there's no joint whatsoever, and we know, based on photos that they tend to shoot, that they're probably not going to have a whole lot of movement when it comes to any kind of crunch time either. So, looking at the photo score, I gave him sculpt and I gave him paint, but obviously there's no extra heads, no extra hands. He's got accessories, technically. I can't even give him articulation because of the torso movement, which means no natural movement. Dr. Fate gets a 3 out of 7. Up next is Supergirl from that same DC Direct Page Punchers line. Now, I think she looks a little better. She looks better proportionally. She looks just really kind of good. The diaper thing still is pretty bad. But like I say, she looks all right. She's got decent sculpts and all that good stuff. But again, no photos were taken showing that she can move all that well with her torso. And if past McFarlane figures are anything to go by, she probably won't be able to. So looking at her photo score... Gave her a point for sculpt, a point for paint. She has no extra head. She does have extra hands. I love that McFarlane's doing that a little more now. Accessories, she does have articulation, but I'm not giving her natural movement based on the history of the line, giving Supergirl a 5 out of 7. Next up, we're looking at Batman figures from the Flash movie with the Michael Keaton Batman. 
And this is all the nostalgia feels coming together right here. I love that he's got a cloth cape. That's very cool. But the figure itself, he doesn't look great. He looks kind of lackluster. So when it came to the photo score, I gave him sculpt and I gave him paint. He got extra hands. He got accessories. He got articulation. But again, no photo here is showing any kind of decent torso movement. The proportions don't look so bad. His head could be a little larger. So I gave the Keaton Batman a 5 out of 7. The next Batman is the Keaton Unmasked slash Ray Liotta Batman. I believe he's a McFarlane Toys exclusive, but I'm not 100%. I need to do homework. I'm just looking at the pictures to see how cool they are. Now, basically, he has the exact same score as the other Batman. I give him a score for Sculpt. Only because even though he's a repaint, they came out at about the same time, so you couldn't tell which was the repaint. Now, if they use this body again, they won't get a point for sculpt. He gets paint, he gets extra hands, he gets accessories, he gets articulation. No natural movement, again, based on the history of the DC Multiverse, DC Direct, that kind of line thing going on for McFarlane Toys, giving him a score of 5 out of 7. Now, oh, Batfleck who looks hardcore. One thing I do appreciate looking at him, he's got thigh cuts, it looks like, which is crazy. So a little bit of thigh swivel, but he also has that articulation at the diaphragm, like closer actually to the abs, that make it look like he's not going to be able to crunch forward at all unless that's some really soft plastic he's got going on there. So going over to his photo score, I gave him a point for sculpt, a point for paint, no extra heads, of course, but again, McFarlane throwing in those extra hands. I'm liking it. He gets a point for accessories, a point for articulation, but I'm not going to give him natural movement just because I know how that kind of piece really hinders articulation. Next up, we've got the Dark Flash, who just has this wicked cool sculpt. He's got a slightly large diaper, all the typical trappings of the McFarlane Toys figures, but this is kind of where McFarlane Toys shines as well as these creepy figures. So, looking at his photo score, I gave him one for sculpt, one for paint. He doesn't have any extra heads or extra hands. He does, however, have a stand, so technically I have to give him a point for accessories. And he's got articulation, but again, going by past history, which is what past is, with DC Multiverse. I can't give him natural movement. Dark Flash gets a score of 4 out of 7. Now we have the Supergirl from the Flash movie, who doesn't look too bad, actually. I'm kind of a fan of the way this one looks. I'm a fan that she's coming with stuff as well. Her proportions look pretty good. They don't look too bad. She's even got, like, her head might look a little oversized, actually, and it could stand to be a little lower on the neck, it looks to me, but it's not that bad. Again, we've got one with extra hands, but yeah, that diaper, little funky. But she does have a flight stand, so when we check out the score for this Supergirl, we can see that I gave her a score for sculpt, a score for paint, Nothing for extra heads, but she does have the hand. She has that flight stand for accessories, and she has articulation. But again, going by past experience with McFarlane Toys, not giving her natural movement, so she gets a 5 out of 7. I am hoping that McFarlane Toys proves me wrong and starts really articulating these things well in the torso. Next up, we have Flash from The Flash, Flashpoint movie, who looks okay, not too bad. I mean, he looks a little elongated sculpt-wise, but I'm not going to bust him too hard. Like, his legs and his arms look way too long, but his head looks like it fits the body. So, we're going to go check out his photo score. I gave him sculpt, although that was a little begrudging. I gave him paint. He got score for accessories and a score for articulation, but just like all the others, nothing for natural movement, giving this Flash a score of 4 out of 7 which is basically the same thing for this Batman-styled Flash. I kind of like this Flash because he looks like it's basically, and I, I hear that's what it is, he painted a bat suit and cut off the ears, and now he just painted it up to be Flash colors. I just think it's a fun idea from the movie. So, there he is. It even looks like, actually, the paint didn't coat very well, which is even cooler. So he gets the same score as the last Flash with a 4 out of 7. And now we've got a character from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure who indeed looks 
relatively bizarre. He's very cool, though. He looks like he's insanely poseable, which is very, very cool, something that I always dig for photos. But he's one of those figures I'll be admiring from afar, as the kids say. He does come with all kinds of stuff, though, so checking out his photo score... I didn't give him anything for sculpt because I discovered he is a straight up repaint. But speaking of, that's a total repaint. So he got something for paint. There's no extra heads, which is kind of different for more import style figures. He does have plenty of extra hands. Like I said before, plenty of extra accessories, great articulation. And it looks like he'll have great natural movement. He just needs to do something about that gun. So he has a total photo score of five out of seven. Now, from Cosmic Legions, we have Operative 8311. If you're a Star Wars nerd, you get that that's, uh, that's kind of a fun name. But he has kind of a Manny Faces look. Looks like a uh, homage to Manny Faces, even with that cool Star Wars name. And like I always say, when it comes to these Cosmic Legions and anything by the Four Horsemen, they just look so cool. I think this is one of those characters that... I could be tempted to get, even though when I look at the photo score, he lacks natural movement. He does, however, have everything else, so he gets a photo score of 6 out of 7. And then we have Scourge, another of the Cosmic Legion's characters, who just looks ridiculously cool. I love the look of this guy. There's a He-Man character he kind of reminds me of, too, and I can't remember his name. But yeah. Again, I would go nuts for these things. This is one of those lines I kind of should have dove in at the beginning, even though we are kind of at the beginning of it. But still, didn't do it. Gotta spend my money elsewhere. But man, they sure are purdy. And Scourge gets the same score as the Operative 8311, with a total of 6 out of 7. And now it's time to hop on the NECA TMNT train with Dumbo and Dopey. And again, I have to say, NECA really is starting to get to the point where I think they're putting in decent articulation. It's not phenomenal yet, but I think it can get there. At least I hope it can get there. I really want to enjoy these figures. But when I'm checking these guys out, I just see really cool stuff. I think NECA brings the heat. So... Checking this package out, I'm giving it a point for sculpt, a point for paint. They both got extra heads, they both got extra hands, they both got accessories, they both got plenty of articulation, but because of a little bit of limitation in the torsos and the single jointed elbows when it comes to Dopey, I believe, UTMNT fans can let me know if I'm wrong, I can't give them natural movement, giving them a score of 6 out of 7. Now, after those guys, we've got Dreadmon. And I gotta say, Dreadmon, he's another of NECA's figures that looks really good. I can't, I can't deny it. I haven't really jumped into NECA yet, although there's a, there's a figure later on in this list here I'm gonna pretty much need to jump in on. But Dreadmon here, he looks great. I don't know what else to say. So, we're just gonna give him a point for sculpt, a point for paint. A point for extra heads, although not really. And folks, there's always one that somehow I screw up the photo score. So we're looking at Dreadmon here, who is another great figure by NECA. Now I gave him a point for sculpt on the photo score. I gave him a point for paint on the photo score. Where I blew it was giving him a point for extra heads on the photo score. He doesn't technically have extra heads. He does have eyes to fit into his head that would change his expression. But for that, I can't give him the objective score of an extra head, though subjectively, I'd still give him a 6 out of 7. He does have extra hands, he does have accessories, he does have articulation, but I've seen reviews and I can't give him anything on natural movement. However, this is the first figure in Toy Photography News that's getting a plus added to him, because even though technically he should be as 5 out of 7, even though subjectively, like I said, 6 out of 7, he's getting a 5 plus, because those eyes change the expression in his head. That's right. I'm getting crazy. And now, after Dreadmon, we're on to black and white Usagi Yojimbo. 
One of those figures that earned all kinds of praise in 2022. Now you can get him in black and white fillet flavor. So looking at Usagi Yojimbo here, I would say he basically has everything he had going on from the last release. He doesn't have natural movement, and I can't give him a point for sculpt because it's a straight-up repaint, but he gets a point everywhere else for a photo score of 5 out of 7. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a figure that I've been wanting, even though I wasn't going to get into the Mirage Studios Comics Turtles because of Casey Jones' waist cut. From time to time, NECA comes in and says, I know you weren't thinking you were going to do that photo, Dave, but we're going to make you do it anyway, and they've done it with Zog. This figure is absolutely phenomenal. Now, I can't give them anything on extra heads, but when it comes to the photo score, I can give them sculpt, I can give them paint, I can give them extra hand, hands, extra accessories. I can even give them articulation because that's actually a ball-jointed waist and he's a huge dude, so it's not like you're going to get much out of the diaphragm. And I'm even going to give him natural movement, even with the limitations in the elbows, because again, huge dude that probably couldn't move any more than what NECA's giving him, giving him a total score of 6 out of 7. And now, some big colorful dinosaurs with Saurozoic Warriors and Stays Akadin. Now, looking at these guys, it doesn't look like there's a lot of articulation. These are the kinds of things that you want in your action figure photography if you enjoy really bright, colorful, kind of 90s homage type characters. Kind of the really bright figures. For me, that's not necessarily a thing, but I still kept it objective. I gave him a point for sculpt. I gave him a point for paint. Nothing for extra heads or extra hands. He does have accessories. He's got articulation, but he looks pretty limited with that articulation. So I gave him nothing for natural movement, giving him a photo score of 4 out of 7. Next up is Seth Rosin, who's another one of those Sorozoic warriors that looking at. He's a super colorful dude, and he's pretty rad. But again, not my kind of thing. That, however, doesn't mean he's not your kind of thing. So checking him out and looking at past releases, he's got a point for sculpt, a point for paint. No extra heads, no extra hands. He does have accessories. He does have articulation. But I'm not going to give him natural movement, giving him a total photo score of 4 out of 7. And then we've got this crazy dude here, Triax Skyver. I really like Triceratops, but looking at him, he just doesn't quite get it done when it comes to the kind of stuff I collect, but still, he doesn't look bad. However, he is a straight-up repaint of a Series 1 figure, so he gets nothing for sculpt, he gets a point for paint, nothing for extra heads or hands, he does get a point for accessories and articulation, but nothing for natural movement, giving this Saurozoic Warrior a total photo score of 3 out of 7. Next up, we've got Pava Persia, who kind of has a nutty look. He's probably the closest to one that I would pick up. He just looks crazy. He's kind of a, I guess, a ninja. And you don't want to mess with ninjas. Those Archaeopteryxes, they're crazy. So, looking at his photo score, he gets one for sculpt. He gets one for paint. No heads, no hands. He does get accessories and articulation, but again... Doesn't look like much is going on in that torso, so I'm not giving him anything for natural movement. Giving him a total photo score of 4 out of 7. Now, closing out this week's toy photography news with everything Hasbro showed off, here is the Tuscan Chieftain from the Book of Boba Fett. And I know he's a repaint, but they did a lot to not make him look like an obvious repaint. So, when it comes to the photo score... I actually gave him a point for that sculpt, and I think he looks really good, so I gave him a point for the paint. No extra heads, though, no extra hands. There are accessories, there is articulation, and I think for a Black Series human-style character, I'm even going to give natural movement, and I was saying him, the chieftain might be a her. I'm not sure, it was never defined, and if it was, I don't remember. I, uh, I don't think much about the Book of Boba Fett. That's on me. Anyway, five out of seven.
Now, it's Power Rangers time with the Lost Galaxy Yellow Ranger. And I continue to think that the Power Rangers line does really good work. My only problem is the way that the articulation set up in the waist with characters like this one, where whenever they twist, they break up the sculpt because of the paintwork on the lower abs. What would be helpful is a ball system at the waist and another ball at the diaphragm joint, and then you wouldn't have to worry about breaking that up. Still, I am always impressed by the accessories they give these things, so looking at the photo score for this one, she gets nothing for sculpt because they these tend to be repaints. Now, let me know. Comment below and let me know if you think these repaints that make sense should get a point for sculpt, even if they are repaints, because I'm genuinely curious about that. I'm not so sure, but I want to know from you. And she gets a point for paint. She gets a point for an extra head, a point for extra hands, a point for accessories, a point for articulation. But again, because she has that twist at the diaphragm joint and only the crunch at the waist joint, she gets nothing for natural movement, leaving her a total photo score of 5 out of 7. Now we're looking at the SPD Yellow Ranger, who definitely, looking at her photo score, gets nothing for sculpt because... She's a repaint of a much older body. Doesn't even have double-jointed elbows. My goodness, what year are we living in? Okay, that's, that's enough of that. She does get a score for paint. She gets a score for extra heads, a point for extra hands, a point for accessories, a point for articulation. But again, she suffers from having design on her lower abdominal area, which means she doesn't get a point for natural movement. And now it's time for a repaint of Ronan. I believe this is a new head, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Let me know in the comments. But this is Ronan from Endgame, and he looks all right. That's not a terrible likeness to Jeremy Renner, but he moves just like your typical Marvel Legends figure moves. He, therefore, because he's a repaint, he gets nothing in sculpt. He gets paint. He does have an extra head, no extra hands, he does have accessories, and he's got articulation, but because of the overlay, he's so hindered in the waist, even though it's cut down the sides, and he has the waist cut anyway, I can't give him natural movement for a total score of 4 out of 7. Now, closing it out for real, we've got G.I. Joe with Classified Big Ben, who I believe is a Night Force version, and just as G.I. Joe Classified does... They just keep nailing it with these figures. He looks great. All the classified figures look good. My only gripe is I just want more hands. I mean, I'd obviously love more expressive heads as well to go with the heads they come with, but more hands would make things so much better for my collection. Anyway, looking at the photo score for Big Ben, he gets a point for sculpt, a point for paint, a point for an extra head. No point for extra hands. Nothing. Well, yeah, he's got accessories. He's got articulation. Clearly, I'm tired. He's got natural movement, giving him a photo score of 6 out of 7. And finally, closing it out for real with the Range Viper, another very cool G.I. Joe classified figure with a straight-up homage to the 1980s. And I have to say, I really hope they get away from that soon because, to be perfectly frank, personally... I'm getting kind of bored with the old 80s in 6-inch style in the year 2023. I like to see newer stuff, but that might just be me. Let me know in the comments if you feel the same way. So, looking at the photo score for the Range Viper, he gets a point for sculpt, a point for paint. He has no extra heads or hands. He gets a point for accessories, a point for articulation, and he's got natural movement because of the way that the articulation scheme is set up for G.I. Joe, giving him a total photo score of 5 out of 7. Holy crap, I might be a little out of breath. And that has been this week's episode of Toy Photography News. Comment below and let me know if I missed anything, and if I didn't, awesome. Comment below instead and let me know if you're planning on picking up any of these figures, and is there anything I can do to improve Toy Photography News? These are all things that help me help you. Now, with all that said, thank you very much for checking this out all the way to the end. I'm really stoked that you were able to take the time to do that. The road to a thousand is getting smaller, and I'm super geeked that you're along for the ride when it comes to all that craziness. Now, 
all that said, and until next time, have fun and happy snapping. See ya.